changing it and the image is also called crosshair so we're making the sprite called crosshair and the image also is called crosshair that's why we have it double the time so we want to scale the sprite um, crosshair at 120 so that's 20 percent greater than what it initially is um, and then we got crosshair and then we go uh, to the where were we just now uh, info display yeah okay so here we go to info display so now it's displaying the crosshair is pretty simple so I'm going to leave some space so we can put the ammo afterwards so uh, so DB sprite um, crosshair because that's what we're displaying and when we display that X minus 32 now we're displaying the crosshair right in the center and because the crosshair is 64 by 64 we're going to do 32 uh, Y minus 32 and so on because that will position it right in the center of the screen where we want it okay so and then we've got crosshair all right that's the image we're putting on that and that should position our crosshair right in the center screen go and do a quick test I mean I initially wanted to do an expanded crosshair like I did in my third person game but um yeah there we go beautiful stuff but that would have taken up too many lines uh, and it would probably reach 2000 well probably a bit under but um, that would just be you know kinda useless and no longer tutorial be a game by itself so next thing we're doing just gonna find out quickly what we're doing next so we're gonna do I have to start the enemies now guys this is a little bit of work but it's definitely worth it when you're done with it so enemies uh, load enemies so we're gonna start here I'm gonna call this enemy spawner now this is gonna work on a timer and every x seconds uh, you get to choose at the top it will spawn an enemy okay so we're gonna have to declare a bunch of variables as well in a minute void enemies uh, oops that is later on uh, enemy spawner so this is a very simple one that leads into a very complex function so if db timer minus spawn timer now this is what would occur in a second so same with the spawn interval um, then you spawn the enemies spawn enemies okay so you spawn the enemies if they um, spawn enemies a function will show you in a second so then you go void here void spawn void spawn enemies and this is where we'll have a fair bit of work to do it's one of the slightly longer f functions in the game but um, alright so what this does here so in number of enemies of enemies we'll do the code and then we'll declare the variables at the top no reason why we shouldn't do that um, and then we go bool add enemy add enemy equals false and you go for int i equals zero just a second smaller than max enemy number me number and this is that variable declared at the top and then you go i plus plus so this bit um, this first bit checks how many enemies are alive pretty much uh, so if db object exists um, enemy holder now this is the variable we're going to declare in a second which is called enemy holder i zero so uh, I'm just, just going to declare that now so if object doesn't exist right, then enemy counter will equal that okay equal i so that means that's the enemy we're using right now and then we go add enemy equals true so we're going to declare these variables right now uh, else number number of enemies plus plus okay <coughs> so just gonna do a last bit here enemy number display equals number of enemies which is what we just found out so this is what we use to display the so I'm just gonna start it just to find out what I didn't okay guys I was just doing some uh, troubleshooting and something gave me a lot of trouble so it turns out I did this bit wrong um, like I told you I wasn't too used to doing the vine but basically by doing that I got myself loads and loads of errors and every for loop seemed to screw up so that's 
that should be fixed now so let's just continue with this so the clear all these variables here okay as you can see them uh, sorry if you missed a little bit of what I was typing but I was, I was trying to find out what's wrong with this but these are the variables if you like to pause it for a second and just declare these variables and uh, basically got this here and I commented the enemy spawner out and everything and uh, this is what we got here um, so spawn enemies uh, this first bit will um, don't know if this will run but basically this first bit will find out how many enemies we've got um, and um, yeah it'll just count them and it'll tell us if there's a free enemy if there is a free enemy slot then use it to put a new one in when we spawn one so that's that I think and just gonna do a quick check see if this runs if nope that's a billion errors again it's not good uh, oh never mind I did so yeah you do not do a semicolon here whatsoever because otherwise you're gonna get tons and tons of errors so that's that and then so I've got a small error here um, so I forgot to do a little closing bracket here as well and add enemy add enemy equals true now I should have I haven't the yep seems alright um, but will it tell us how many enemies we've got it won't increase because I'm not spawning enemies but basically that's what we're going to do now we're going to do the actual spawning of the enemies so if there was a free slot for the enemy to spawn if add enemy um, equals equals true. Uh, you can just you don't have to do equals equals true, but I'm going to do that for those of you that maybe don't understand boolean that well. So if enemy counter is smaller than max enemy number, I don't know if we declared ma uh, enemy counter at the top. I think so. Uh, so if the limit of enemies hasn't exceeded yet, then we we are allowed to put another one in. So enemy holder enemy counter zero uh, equals create enemy so this is a function by the way guys this is where we're gonna spawn our enemy load this the object and everything so we'll do this right and just for a second oh didn't I push that far but basically just gonna create the enemy here uh, do the function for you so void create enemy so I'm gonna, just gonna do that quickly um, and this this one we're going to return an integer by the way I made a small mistake this one which we return to something so in object now equals find free object now this is a function we're going to make now because eventually when you start making a lot of loading a lot of objects into a game you start having problems because um, it, it, the way that Dark GDK works you need free objects and if you want to be aware of what you're loading um, you can't just keep going a number up eventually you're just going to forget so if you use find free object that's the function that is going to find us a free object and use that so so db load object and then we're loading enemy slash slash alien oh, damn it I always forget to do the brackets the parentheses so enemy uh, slash slash alien mutant now this should be in one of our folders by the way if you download the f if you got the files you should have h alien mutant now this is off the i think it was dark matters model pack so it is not mine just letting you know that and you cannot sell it neither can i so um this is just you know first to learn and all that good stuff so db load object and we've done that now in order to load all animations of this object a lot of the times objects have all their animations in one but this isn't the case uh, but this one will be like um, the append object this is a, a thing we do to um, append object this is something we use to um, add animations onto an object that's how it works so um, first one we want to do uh, alien h alien mutant and we do attack one okay and this goes to object and then we say what frames we want to increment on it so we're going to go db total object we want to add those frames on so we want to go like that and then go object like that and then plus one so we we find how many frames the object has already and we increment one on that and then we put the new ones in there and then basically uh, I'm sure I'll make a typing mistake somewhere around here but basically attack and the second one will be impact and the third one will be move you have to do these in the same order guys or you will not have the movements working properly you'll have attacking where impact should be and so on uh, and then we got static 
so we're standing still and we got um oh never mind static and then we have die okay and that's it then just gonna have a quick look see if I've made any mistakes obvious ones so um attack one impact one no impact uh and then we got move and then we got static and then we have die okay that should be it then and then you got db load sound now this the only sound we need to load for the enemies because obviously you know we're trying to not go too in depth enemies and you want to call it scream pain now this is the sound of the enemy dying so if you go to the first video you'll find you'll see that or at least demonstration video you'll see that the you can see the enemy do a little sound when he dies okay so enemy death sound now I haven't declared this at the top I don't think yeah I haven't so I've got to declare that um, so we're going to declare it as 9 at the top by the way guys so uh, the enemy related variable so as you see right now we're getting some g a lot of lines going so we need to try and keep the code as neat as possible because in the long term it is a problem so we want to go back to create enemy now because we've done this. Actually, we want to do the find free object function. So we're going to do this now. So void uh, actually it returns an integer. So int find free object. So yeah, int find free object. And the way this works is int free object so equals one. So while uh, db object exists. So it checks until um, an object's well until it finds an object that doesn't exist, and when it does, then it stores that object, and we use it for our new um, for our new object. So and then returns that value, return free object. Okay. So with create enemy, I think I forgot to return this as well. You don't you don't want to forget to return that. So you want to return object. Okay. So you want to return, tell them which one the enemy is, and that's it. So that's done there. Okay, so that's that. So now these are things we have to do. The return object left. First thing we're going to do is that because um, because the object has got a rotation a bit weird on this one. I think it faces is the back to you. So. And then we fix the pivot, fix object, pivot. That. Now this, um, I think it locks their rotation so that it stays at the uh, angle that we just turned him into. So enemy, and we change it to five equals zero. Now uh, enemy holder five uh, pretty much says enemy is alive. Okay, so enemy holder, enemy holder five, make hunter. Yeah, so five, we're saying, you know, <coughs> by the way, zero is alive and one is dead, by the way, because I don't want you getting confused with that. But I don't know why I did it that way, I just did. So, uh, enemy holder, I'm going to copy this quickly, because every time. Enemy holder, <coughs> one equals, now this will assign the health to the enemy, by the way. So, we're assigning a bit of a random health for him random and then we do a hundred we'll do a hundred and then we plus two hundred so his health can be anywhere in between um zero and three hundred okay so you don't want all enemies having the same health because it, it becomes predictable and so on so <coughs> int which state equals